Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. In today's video, I've got a really special treat for y'all. I've had a few people asking about the milk cows and milk cows versus dairy goats, so on and so forth. So, I could stand here and I could tell you what I've read about milk goats and so on and so forth. I don't have any experience with that. But, instead of doing that, I'm going to bring y'all up to my sister-in-law's. She does milk her goats and she's going to give you her opinion on milk goats. I'm going to give you my opinion on milk cows and hopefully this will help you make a decision in your dairy journey if that's something you're considering. So this is not my sister-in-law's first time on the channel. If you remember back in the video when we were banding that calf, uh, that was my sister-in-law. So we live about a mile from each other and we're going to head up there and uh, check out her milk milking situation. And so this is a newer milking setup, right? Like y'all are just building this, but you're getting the goats and everything used to it. Yes, so this is where I'm probably gonna milk at from here on out. Um, we're gonna make a little food room back here, but yeah, it's still a work in progress. It takes a lot of time and money. So Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are getting there. So I do just like what Megan does with the cows. I have to clean her udder really well. And they have gotten fairly cooperative for me. So I just get them all good and cleaned up and I just use regular ivory soap. And then I'll dry her off. Look at her, she's got this. And then all I have to do is get my little bowl. I milk into a separate bowl that I don't. And then I pour it into a different one because these goats are so bad for kicking. I'll squirt me out a few squirts on the floor. That's why my floor is so dirty, just because of all the little squirts from the floor. And then I just go to town milking in my bowl. But one thing is, is that these goats have to have food the entire time you're milking. They are not patient if there's no food in front of them. I do feel like I, I would love to have a milk cow at some point in my life, but Right now, the goats, I feel like, are probably easier to work with than the cow. Just because they're not going to kill you if they kick you. It's very true. <laughs> yeah. They have powerful <laughs> kicks. Me and uh, my daughter have been kicked. We have been stepped on. We have, we have flipped over a goat, even, um, during this learning process. But it has all worked out, and they do so well for us now. I can milk many out in about five minutes if she cooperates nicely as long as she has food and goat milk is easier on your stomach so if you have anybody like in your family that's sensitive to cow's milk or whatnot goat milk would be the ideal choice um because it doesn't separate i feed it to our 15 month old he has been on it since he's been one and has not had any issues and he loves it like he can't do life without his goat milk um and then my husband he actually has a sensitivity to cow's milk and he finally worked up the nerve to try the goat's milk <laughs> and it doesn't mess his stomach up so he's actually in love with it too now but see if a cow did that you probably would have been in trouble she gets a little timid once I start getting closer to being milked out. So half the time I'll just go to one hand and just grab one leg with the other hand. Just to keep her from knocking over my milk. No, no, baby. I'm almost done. Almost done. We don't have a fancy stanchion or anything, so it doesn't take a it doesn't take a lot. You don't have to have anything fancy to to milk these animals. You just have to have patience and the will to do it. Um, these little girls have they come down here by themselves. They're very food motivated. Um, I just clip them to their little lead rope, and they'll just they'll stand here for me. Nothing fancy. 
No fancy stanchion. I don't clip their head into anything other than just tying them. But look, she's out of food, so she's gonna start being moody. <laughs> she gets out of the way, waits for me to put some more in. She's got this figured out. <laughs> yep, she's got it figured out. Come on, up, up. Easy, girl. There you go. I'm just gonna make sure I get her completely milked out, then we'll spray her with the spray. And we'll be done. So right here at the end, you just spray them down good with some chlorhexidine. And I always just make sure I see a couple drips come off the end of the udder and then she's good to go. And now we'll go and do the next one. So we'll unhook her, put her back in the pasture and we'll let Miss Clarabelle run down here now. You aren't handling a huge, how much does candy weigh? Probably 1,000, 1,200 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Which I love cows, don't get me wrong. And eventually maybe we, stop it, we can get to a goat uh milk and cow goofy stop it but for now these work all right so we've come back to the house and what do you filter that through coffee just a filter? reusable coffee filter and then the regular cannon funnel and i'm not going to have nowhere near the half a gallon but i go ahead and put it in a half gallon jar because tonight's milking i'll put in the same jar once it cools um so that i don't have so many jars in my refrigerator I usually get about a quart off mini in the morning and then I'll get a quart off of her again this evening. So you're getting about a half a gallon a day. I am off just one goat. And that is plenty sustainable. I do have another goat that we're milking, but she's battling some mastitis right now, so I'm not saving her milk. So I just let that filter out and then I'll go do Claire Bell here and just here shortly. And her milk goes to the chickens or the pigs. <laughs> so that's one thing all of us on this hillside, like I feel like we all do pretty well is we make sure stuff don't go to waste. So even though the people ain't drinking it, you're making sure that somebody's drinking it. Exactly. <laughs> look at there, look at there. Yep, my pretty white milk. And then I date the jar. It'll go in the fridge to cool and this evening We'll blend them together once the evening milk and cools. Um, I usually milk, I don't have any room in my fridge. I usually milk twice a day, um, at least many, because she gets so full that I'm concerned that she'll get mastitis if I don't. Um, but it's okay, it's not that bad because it doesn't take me that long. So I usually do the morning milk in around 10 when my baby goes down for a nap. And then we'll do the other one about seven after he goes to bed. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not that bad. The worst part is the dishes, as Megan has told you guys before. Because I feel like I'm washing dishes all the time. That's your new pet, ain't it? Yes, that's our little peacock. He hangs out on our porch. <laughs> and he does quite a bit of talking. But he's pretty cool. I've uh, managed to steal a couple feathers there that have go. fallen out. So... <laughs> I follow him around looking for falling out feathers. They got their little pigs too. We all went together. Hey, piggy piggies. Yep, I'm going to give them that leftover milk from Clarabelle now. Mix it in with their feet a little bit. Let's go, babies. Nothing goes to waste. Those piglies will sure enjoy that. So, you got done for this morning anyway. Yes. Um, and you'll do that again this evening after yep. the baby goes to bed. Yep. Um, so, do you have any pros, cons for dairy goats? Maybe some new people are looking into getting dairy goats or? Um, well, I, I personally love my Nubians. Um, they are friendly goats. They love people. They are just the sweetest goats. We had some Nigerian dwarfs that we actually got from Megan and Andy a couple years back, and they were not nice. <laughs> they weren't nice. Yeah. I, I know. Why do you think I got rid of them? Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of people milk milk them, but in my opinion, I just I just don't think that they would be for me. Um, they were a lot more moody. They they headbutted a lot. I mean, they were. They just weren't nice, and they smelt. They smelt mm -hmm. like a goat. But these, I feel like they don't no, smell. No, they don't have. They don't really have a smell. And I think, like, I mean, 
you know, me and Andy used to have all them goats, and these Nubians seem like super chill to be goats. Like, they, they are. They really do. Yeah, they are chill. They don't stink. Um, our billy goat doesn't stink. A lot of people complain about how stinky billy goats are, and ours doesn't stink. He doesn't do any of the weird stuff for the most part right, right. that goats do. <laughs> right. Um, but I really love my Nubians for the most part. Now, Megan did remind me that they are harder to fence knock on wood we have very good goats except for our one little troublemaker crow um and the only reason he gets out is because he was a bottle baby and my daughter has him spoiled they're always the troublemaker exactly <laughs> um but they they stay in the pasture very well um as long as there's power on it but if there is not power on it you'll see them start getting out so you just have to make sure you have a hot wire um but the best part about goats is you can throw them anywhere I mean, you can throw them in the middle of the woods. You can throw them on some brush that you want cleaned up. They are perfect for cleaning up brush. Um, rather, as a cow, you have to have like a nice, pasture. big, yeah. green pasture to be able to feed them so they'll keep their weight. But our goats will eat anything. Um, and I know that some people talk about how you have to baby goats. Or some people baby goats. But our goats are not babied. Um, I think it all depends on how you raise them. Some you can get that are super hardy that can just about live through anything or eat anything or do anything. And then you have some that have been babied their whole life and they'll they'll die if you look at them wrong, I feel like. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, they we have some no of them boar goats like that and that's one reason me and Andy got out of Yeah, they have no <laughs> will to live. so high maintenance. Yeah. But it all depends on how you treat them. Um, our goats, I feel like, are pretty healthy. We do, we give them hay. I get, you know, I do buy grain from, like, Track Supply or the local meal and feed them. They get fed grain every day, and I do have a mineral that I give them in their feed. It's just a regular goat mineral, and I feel like that helps a lot. Um, the only problem we have ever had with these Nubian goats is something called bloat, and that is actually where they end up eating too much. So he got super bloated and he was grinding his teeth and we did a whole bunch of research trying to figure out what in the world was going on with him turns out he had bloat and bacon soda actually fixes that problem so a lot of times i just leave bacon soda out in a little feed bowl for them just to free range on because they'll they'll eat it if they need it um, but otherwise these goats have been pretty hardy and I can't, I can't complain with them. Right, right. Yeah, and just think of the money you're saving, too. Like, you, you're talking about, well, even on hay, goats don't eat nearly the hay that mm -mm. a cow eats. No, they're a lot cheaper to feed because they're smaller. Yep. And they'll yep. eat anything. And then the price point, well, me and you were talking about this the other day. If you want to get into something, goats are a little bit cheaper than cows. They used to be a lot cheaper than cows. These days, yep. they're not exactly they're a not. lot cheaper. But, <laughs> if, you um, have to, if you find a registered one, they are they can get up there in price but ours aren't registered so we somehow or another managed to find these goats at a super good deal from a super great home i actually still keep in touch with the lady we got them from um and i'm just we are really blessed with the goats that we've ended up with mm -hmm. for yeah, sure there's some good ones they, they are, are. <laughs> they really are <laughs> um so what do you make with with your goat milk right now um so i have made yogurt which is actually really, really good. Um, eating raw yogurt is not good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. But I have since then been putting some of my homemade jelly in the yogurt. And you want to talk about delicious. That That is very good. Mm -hmm. It is good. And then I have frozen some yogurt. Some yogurt. Mm -hmm. I have frozen some milk in like little ice cube trays to make goat milk soap. So I have some goat milk soap laying on my table just curing. About two more weeks, we'll be able to use it. Mm -hmm. And then um, I have done cheese. I've done what you call like a farm cheese. Uh, so you pretty much just put vinegar in cooked milk and it cultures like immediately. And then you strain it and you just have to let it dry out a little bit. And it's what you call a farm cheese. It, it's pretty good. Have you tried some of it? Yeah. yeah. Um, I put it, I cut off because it's hard. It doesn't really melt that well, but it's hard. So I cut off little circles of it and put it on pizza. And it's really good like that. Or cool. grate it like on a salad. Yeah. It's and good. It's good. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um I have not made any butter from my goat milk because it is it doesn't separate quite like a cow's milk. I have recently learned though that if it stays in the fridge for about five days, you'll start to see the cream rising on the milk. 
but it's not really enough for me to try making butter with. Um, I know a lot of people actually scrape it off each time and freeze it until they get enough to make butter. But luckily, I have a sister-in-law down the road with a cow that produces a lot of cream. So That's I, right. I just uh, hijack hers every once in a while when I need some butter. That's right. And that's one thing, uh, you know, that we love about living here, which we've all been here and families has been here for generations, but we all kind of rely on each other. Sometimes I think self-sufficiency is kind of a myth and community sufficiency is where it's at. Exactly. So, like we, we rely on each other for, for different things. It's just like I have a lot of folks ask why we don't raise meat rabbits. Well, right here's the reason we don't <laughs> raise meat rabbits. She raises, uh, she raises meat rabbits and, you know, if we want a rabbit for the freezer or something, I just call her up and say, hey, you got any rabbits? <laughs> so, exactly. you know, and the same deal with the milk and we just kind of, it all evens itself out. Um, so I, I think we're real blessed to be right here together like that. Exactly. Um, but yeah, and I'm happy, you know, I got milk running out my ear. So when she calls me, I'm like, yes, please take some, <laughs> <laughs> take some. <laughs> yes. And I've even talked her into taking a little bit of goat's milk so she can make some soap. <laughs> yes. I want to make some soap with it. I've got it frozen, but I haven't attempted the soap yet. So. I'm excited about that. Yes, it was. It actually was not as hard as I expected it to be. Really? Yes, I was very. I was very pleased with the process. I'm I, very freaked out that I'm gonna like scald the milk. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, it was not that hard. Cool. It was. It was easy. I'll send you the recipe that I used because yes, it do was that. very. It was a very easy recipe. Very simple. Me and Mathy did it as like a science project one cool, day. Cool. There you go. Yeah. yeah I've only <laughs> ever made it with lard and lye. I had never done it with milk. So. Yeah, it was fun. I enjoyed it. I think I might make it again. But I only made. I only made unscented. I haven't tried scenting it yet because right. I was kind of was Well, yeah, you're experimenting. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, I appreciate you letting us come up here today and sharing with everybody your opinion on the goats and everything. And, y'all, I guess we're going to get back to the house and get to milking the cow and let's talk about cows for a little bit. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Bye. Good girl. You can get mad all you want to, but that was a good girl. Good job. You know, a cow versus a goat if you're looking to get into dairy. So as you know, a cow is much bigger than a goat. And Candy here is being trained, so she's not exactly as cooperative as I would like for her to be, but she's learning. So patience is key with pretty much any animal, but especially cows. Patience and staying calm. You can't get mad because if you get mad, they know it. <laughs> um, so, I do just like you saw Abby doing this morning, except she gets a kick bar because if she kicks like them goats kick, that's going to hurt a whole lot more. <laughs> so, that kick bar just keeps me safe and keeps her still. Like I said, where she is learning, what she's been doing, she's been doing really good lately. I'll talk it up now and she'll be terrible, but it'll be fine. Oh, girl. The camera makes her a little nervous too. She's a little, you know, anything different. And we're totally out of routine because as you saw, they've been moved out onto the pasture instead of up here in our winter paddock. So, Candy now thinks she's some kind of free-range, untamed cow. <laughs> she has a job and she has to fulfill her job. And her job is to be our milk cow right now. So, I wash them off with just a very tiny bit of soap and some hot water. And this right here is a little unorthodox. Don't take advice from me. This is what my grandma used to do. Worked out fine for us so far. I dump out the little bit of soapy water, wipe it out, and use the same bucket because I only have so many arms. So, oh girl. Um, but that works out, works out for me and our milk keeps about two weeks. So something must be going right. Get you a few squeezes out because that's where all the dirt and bacteria, most of it is up in them first few squirts. So those just go on the ground and then we get started. So 
a con to a milk cow, especially somebody that's never been around a lot of animals, is this really intimidating y'all being under a darn 1200 pound cow down here with her uh, best weapons, <laughs> which are her back feet. Um, but she gives me about a gallon a day and that is a, definitely an abundance of milk. So not only does she feed us and we get to make all the milk things, she feeds all the animals too. The pigs, the chickens, the dogs, the cats. We have plenty of extra milk to feed everybody, not just ourselves. So just like Abby, I milk into one bucket and pour it into another because Candy is learning. And if she does kick my bucket over, I don't want to lose all my milk. I'll just be losing whatever's in that bucket, so. And if you do that, make sure you got something with a lid on it because there's dogs and cats running around here that just dying to get them a taste. Goats probably make, uh, I don't really know much about milk goats other than the ones we used to have. And, uh, you know, I know that goats are a lot more acceptable to parasites and stuff like that. And Goats are probably a lot harder to keep in a fence than a cow is. Well, but, a cow you can keep in one strand if you got good cows. Right. Yeah, they got to have a good cow. When that goes with any animal, you got to have a good animal. But um, um, I don't know. In my opinion, I think I'd rather have a cow because of the abundance of milk you get. Because, like she just said, we have a surplus to go around to to feed extra to the pigs, the dog, the chickens, the cats even, you know. So you get a lot of milk and you get a lot of butter, which is something we use all the time. Usually the offspring of your milk cow is gonna give you quite a bit of meat as well. And you know, I've never been one to care much about eating a goat. You can eat a goat, but um, you know, I would rather have a little steer or something that I, that we can butcher and use for beef for ourselves as well. You're doing good. But I think my biggest thing is I just like cows. Well, I think in my opinion, just from our experience, if you've got the pasture land, that's the big question. Yep. If you've got the pasture land to do it with and you're able to make your own hay, I think cows are so much easier, less upkeep than goats. I'd say even if you had to buy your own hay. Because these cows right here, I mean, they pretty well take care of themselves. Yeah, once, because they eat something that grows for free anyways. Grass. Especially once they're out on the pasture. Yeah, now in the winter time, it's a little different. Look at them streams of milk. Yeah, the winter time's a little bit different because you got, you know, grass obviously isn't growing in the winter time, but for the rest of the year, spring, summer, and fall, for the most part, they eat for free. But, I mean, like I said, something to remember though, if you're questioning which one you should get and you've never been around large animals, a goat may be a good start just because they're smaller, they're less intimidating. Because I've been around large animals my whole life and it still intimidates me. <laughs> right. But with any dairy animal, the biggest key is routine. I cannot say that enough. I feel like dairy cows versus beef cows, which is what I grew up with, was beef cows. We never had no dairy cow. And I feel like they have a different personality than beef cows. Yes, I think so, so too. It's, it's almost like they, I mean, they got... They got feelings. They do, like <laughs> they have feelings. I mean, and I guess all cows have feelings, but uh, they're different. You'll understand why a lot of people say that the milk cow is the main, the most important piece of their homestead. 
That's right. She has a lot of hats she has to wear. Mm -hmm. She provides beef. She provides feed. She provides fertilizer. You know? Yeah, but think about all, what all comes from our milk cow here. We get our compost that we make, which is not just her. You know, there's two other cows in there with her, plus the two horses, but still. We get the compost we make. We get extra feed for the animals. Get milk and butter. And we get beef. I mean, the biggest con I can think of is the you know, land it takes. The land, the size, and the overabundance of milk. I'll tell you, if you don't have something to feed it to, it can get extremely overwhelming because the milk will add up quick, even at just a gallon a day. Like, it well, starts adding up in a hurry. That's something else you need to make sure you got refrigerator space. Yep. To put this stuff. <laughs> We're almost done. Of course, I could be a little biased in saying I'd rather have a milk cow than a goat because what's what we got is milk cows. But Ooh. we did have goats. I was going to say, we've had goats. But, but we never had one that we could successfully milk either. That's right. And to each their own. I mean, if that works for you, there's no judgment either way. I think they're both great options because both ways you are taking steps of taking care of yourself. That's right. So... I mean, and I think the biggest pro to a goat is they don't take near as much room as That's a cow. Right. I just keep it very simple. I mean, I don't get real technical with this stuff. As but, long as she's healthy, the milk keeps fine. That's one of your biggest things is you'll know if you're cleaning and everything like you should be because if you're not, your milk will let you know because it won't keep. So... I don't, I'm not out here with a real expensive machine or anything. Is it manual labor? Absolutely. But this is one of my favorite parts of the day, spiking with these darn cows. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know what? Sometimes you can get too mechanized because, you know, I, I could see if you were milking several cows every evening, having a machine, but. Well, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. But one. But one, there's no sense in it because it would take longer to clean the machine than it would to milk the cow. But for now, I'm physically able. This is way cheaper than a milk machine. <laughs> it worked for a five dollar bucket. A five dollar bucket from Tractor Supply. <laughs> yeah. And look, there's somebody waiting to Wait, get anything yes. that might be left over. She gets to clean this bucket when I get done before I sanitize it. And she knows. She waits every day down here patiently, but doesn't she? I encourage y'all to, to go back in the videos if you've not been around long and see how Candy was, what, six weeks ago? And see how good she stood here for this today. Yeah, she's you know. doing great. But look at this. She knows she's done. She always knows when she's done. She's waiting on it. She's done and she knows it. Did you get it all? Yep, that's it. So I know you were telling me, you may have already said this, but the uh, most important part is to get it all. To get every, every drop. Even though the calf is on her, I want her body to realize that we're using every drop. Because if I start leaving some in there and not milking it all out, her body's going to say, oh, well, they didn't use that milk. I don't need to make as much. So for me to continue getting what I'm getting and for her to keep making milk, you have to get every drop out. And when you're not calf sharing, you have to do that anyway to prevent mastitis. But even with calf sharing, I try to get every drop that I can. And plus, the last is where all your cream's at. So, um, and I know you saw Abby use the chlorhexidine spray. So I use this right here. And I'll link this in the description. But this was this is an excellent investment. And this bottle will last forever. I've had this bottle for like three years. And it's just aerosol chlorhexidine uh, that sanitizes her teats. So... You've got to close off that orifice um, to keep any bacteria from getting in there and causing mastitis. And you just come back here. She's pretty used to this now, though. Just give her a little squirt. And I'll take all this off and I'll unhook her and get them. I'll go open the gate so they can go back to the back pasture. 
And that's all for right now, and I'll show you how I strain my milk here in just a little bit. Like I said, that's one thing with a milk cow. I would really be sure before you make that investment, you're gonna have extra milk and you need something to, to feed it to or you're gonna get overwhelmed really quickly with milk. Well, you know, they say also that milk makes a decent fertilizer as well. Yes, and the way from making cheese and stuff. But she's not getting, now some of these milk cows, the feed bills are ridiculous. Um, you know, that versus goats. Goats don't eat a whole lot, cows do, but if you get you a good bloodline, some of these jerseys can get fat on grass, but I'm gonna tell y'all, don't take a grain-fed jersey that's been grain-fed its whole life and try to turn it into a grass-fed jersey. You'll starve it to death. I mean, that's just the simple fact, and some of them do require more feed than others. The heavier the producer it is, the more feed they're gonna require. She's only giving me a gallon a day she pretty much gets sweet feed at this point now that she's on grass as a tree. That's, it's not to keep weight on or anything. In her condition, for her lactation state, she's in great condition Yeah, I um, mean, the, for the, a jersey, so. And the feed is, yeah, pretty much like her treat while she's up here milking. And she's done, she knows the routine. She's ready to get out of here. So I gotta walk them back down there. You did great, Candy. And of course it's pouring down rain right now too. Alright, so I strained my milk just with, I've got a stainless steel, just can and funnel, and this is a stainless steel coffee filter. So I just sit that in there, it's one of those funnel shaped ones. So, I just, it takes a little bit because you kind of have to let it run kind of slow through that strainer. But, it's better than a cow hair being in there. Uh, yeah. yeah, or a speck of dirt or anything. Yeah. Um, but that strainer seems to do fine as far as straining out any dirt or anything. Because when you are hand milking, whether you're milking goats or milking cows, y'all, it just is what it is. You're bound to determine you're going to get at least one hair in there and probably some flakes of dirt. It just happens. <laughs> Now once I strain it, it goes straight in the refrigerator to cool. But like I said, I just kind of have to wait and let it do its thing. So you say straining is the most important part as far as it keeping, right? Yes. Yeah, because if there's any dirt or hair or anything like that, all that harbors bacteria, you know. Mm -hmm. So any kind of bacteria, I mean, and cleaning your jars, you have to make sure your jars are uh, cleaned properly because, like, one of my things is I smell of them to make sure I don't still smell some kind of anything. Like, they should not smell like anything. Because sometimes, I mean, you may miss a spot down in a corner or something and not realize it, and you can smell that in that jar, but if that's in there, it won't keep no time. So you just have to make sure all your cleaning practices, you know, and you may have to perfect it yourself through trial and error. But like I said earlier, that's how you know you've got good practices is when your milk keeps. And like I said, our milk's been keeping about two weeks, so... I don't even know if store-bought milk keeps that long. I was going to say, that's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's been keeping about two weeks, so... I'll take that. And 
you know, if I was doing this milk for other people, my cleaning practices may be a little different than what you saw me do, but I trust myself to make sure that cow is clean enough and this milk is clean enough to feed my family. So I think I trust that pretty good. I mean, if there is any doubt in my mind that say, she pooped or something while I'm milking. If there's any doubt in my mind that even a splat of that got in that milk, uh, it's going to the pigs. Like, that ain't happening. <laughs> right. So I just, um, but usually cows quit doing that after when they're not nerved up. So she ain't done that in a while. Yeah, Candy's gotten so much better about that. Yeah. You can definitely tell she's not near as nervous <laughs> as she used to be. No, and one thing about Candy She's not as nervous as Belle because Belle, like other people can't come around. Belle only likes me. Like, yeah, there's she, no, I couldn't have been down there no, while you were like, <laughs> Belle is so funny. And I guess it's because she was so like not tame when we got her, but I am Belle's only friend. She loves me with all her heart. She actually likes Maggie pretty good too, but it's because Maggie feeds her treats all the time. But like Andy could not be down there. Like even when we walked down there earlier, she was like, nope. Yeah, she wouldn't have nothing to do with it. <laughs> and I've never done nothing to that cow. It's just, a, she don't like it. She don't like, well, it's not just you, it's anybody. Yeah, anybody. Yeah. Um, but anyways, I think I may have close to a gallon and a half again today. That's all right. So that, meal, that grass, I guess, is working on her. Yeah. But anyways, guys, um, while I'm getting this strained, I really hope y'all enjoyed today's video. It was something a little different, but I really wanted to bring you both sides of the perspective, goats versus cows. Like I said earlier, I think it's wonderful that you're just thinking about taking the step to do that. Or if you know a local farm, you know, either or, both of them have their pros and their cons, and I really hope we answered that today from both sides and helped you make that decision if you're thinking about doing your own dairy at home. But anyways, let us know what you think in the comments and until we see y'all in the next one. Y'all have a good one. Have a good one.